the intention of the bike was kind of just to build number one it was very different style for me I'm, I'm traditionally building choppers or uh, 60 style choppers and for me this was a little bit of a departure I kind of wanted to challenge myself myself and I wanted to build something ostensibly that would be kind of what the factory might do as a pro street kind of thing in the 80s so it's got um, an 80s feel to it so it's a cross between sort of a cafe and a drag bike and it's got some you know a different little flavor to it and it's a it's a lot of fun to ride Hey, this is Caleb Owens from Crow Customs here in Ventura County, California, and this is my 1976 Harley-Davidson FL H custom build called Yang Yang. This bike was originally my personal bike that uh, I rode in completely different form for a long time. And, uh, and Born Free 4, I was an invited builder, and this was the bike I built specifically for the show. When I had the chassis done, I basically did paper cutouts and just sort of get a basic shape of how I wanted things to flow. And then in the case of the tank in particular, I actually took a piece of foam, a large piece of square foam, block foam, and cut it and shaved it on the bike till I had a shape uh, in the foam that I really liked and worked. And then I took the foam and then I made patterns from the foam and then from those patterns I uh, made the stuff out of sheet metal and then pounded it together and then uh, I don't know it's a lot of hours I mean it's basically not just the pounding of the sheet metal but uh, fitting the fitting the tank on it making sure all the clearances are good all these are cut out to wrap around the rocker boxes and uh, so yeah I was pretty happy with how it came out air cleaner again is 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 handmade the whole entire thing is made from scratch the basic idea behind this was to mimic sort of the 70s AMF era of the ham cans or the square ones, which usually are, you know, three times as large as this, but, but to scale it down and then add a little bit more of a, a design element to it. So this is all made out of sheet metal, a couple pieces of sheet metal. This is aluminum that's machined on my, uh, on my mill and then shaped and uh, the backing plates all handmade. And then there's, you know, there's a day or so of, of making this uh, from scratch and then there's another day or so of cleaning it up so uh, I joke that this is the thousand dollar air cleaner because just the time that's in it um, the rocker boxes are stock Harley Davidson rocker boxes but they are machined here this little cutout is a freeform machine on a mill and then filed and sanded and things like that just to give it a little texture just a little different feel um, the motor is a 1978, which is an 80 inch motor. It's not a full on stroked out high performance uh, bike. It's got some performance uh, into it. It's got, you know, bigger pistons and things like that. It's got a little mild cam in it. It's, it's the horsepower is pushed a little bit, but not so much that it's uh, not really unreliable. So the idea was to kind of make it a tad more of a performance bike and that's the reason for the Makuni carburetor endpoint. The Magneto um, you know is like the old airplanes basically you it's it's fired off of the cam it spins and you fire the bike so it's, you don't need it doesn't require electricity in and of itself. The tank and the seat section are all designed and to be accessible pretty easily so you can take the tank off with two bolts and it just lifts right off if you wanted to clean the bike or want to mess with the wiring, whatever. It's just the whole idea was to keep it simple design-wise as well. And the same thing with the tail section. This is where the battery sits and the oil. Um, the tail section comes off with three bolts, lifts right up, and you have access to the battery and your oil. The oil filler cap is in the top of this. And uh, this, this was something very different for me because I traditionally I have choppers and they're kickstart only and no no suspension and for me this was completely out of the box I have a push button starter and a swing arm I have a nice tight little 14 cell anti-gravity battery 
that allows, it's a really tiny little battery that allows you to get enough amps and cranking and to start it. Uh, also of interest is the oil tank is not like a traditional oil tank in the sense that you have the oil lines coming right out of the face of the tank. I basically hid two of the oil lines in the seat post. And so you only have the one feed line coming down here and then the two other lines go through the seat post and up to the top of the oil tank. And the little uh, tail light right here. This is all handmade and machined. So machined on a lathe initially, and it's an LED. So it's machined on a lathe initially, and then I did some texturing to it on the mill. And it's wired with an LED. So, see that? Neat little, there you go. Almost every build I've done, I've used a lot of built well products. They're really good uh, friends of mine, and they um, are very, very supportive of the work I do. And this is a, a set of their, I think they call them Kung Fu grips. And this is actually a built well throttle. Really, they make a really nice throttle. And I just kind of machined a little piece out of it um, just to give it a little texture and a little racing vibe, you know. You want to put a little drop of oil in there to, to loosen it up. So Biltwell has been a very big supporter of mine and uh, very appreciative of their support and friendship over the years. The, uh, the front end is off of a probably 1982 Harley Davidson that shortened about five inches. These are Works Performance shocks that were custom made specifically for this bike by Works. They're here in California, USA made California company. And the rear brake is actually a, a, a Brembo brake off of a, a sport bike, front brake off of a sport bike that I uh, modified and uh, made all of the bracketry and stuff to work on the rear, rear wheel. The swing arm is actually an early uh, panhead swing arm off a Harley Davidson panhead that's chopped and modified. Wheels are stock Harley Davidson uh, circa 80s probably and the originally these they're called Morris mags were black if you look at some of the old Harley Davidsons or powder coated black so that was all blasted off and then it was all polished and to give it a different look and this front is a 19 stock 19 dual disc um, mid glide or narrow glide front end the brakes are stock uh, I modified the brakes a little bit by uh, machining these little caps just to add some texture to it the wheels are the tires are Goodyear. These are NOS Goodyear tires, probably from 30 years ago. Uh, they don't make these raised letter Goodyear tires anymore, so it gave it a really nice racing look. They're, they they still got a lot of good use out of them, but uh, you know they're definitely they're definitely hard. I'll probably end up replacing those pretty soon. Yeah, the uh, the front end here with this cowling is an original Harley Davidson piece that um, is modified. It's a very simple modification, but actually kind of difficult. The is a, a, a piece that was uh, welded in here, and then there's a piece cut out over here in order to get the handlebars closer together to get more of that racing kind of stance. So I got the clutch cable runs through, and then I got it cut out for the, uh, the cylinder here, master cylinder. And um, the handlebars, again, are all machined, handmade stuff. So these are all separate pieces that were machined and jigged and welded together. The paint, um, again, the idea was to get this sort of almost factory kind of feel and look, stock look to the bike and not do anything crazy custom bike paint. I didn't want it to look like an Easter egg. So I got some traditional AMF era graphics again, and I modified the graphics instead of saying AMF. It says Crow for Crow Customs there. And then at the top of the tank, we have uh, a, my Crow etched into the clear coat, which is a very subtle thing. Um, you can only really see it in the proper light. Foot controls, again, are all made from scratch out of aluminum, all freeform machined and hand filed and things like that. This right down here, this little winged figure, is actually off of a 30s era car, it's a radiator ornament, and uh, I sliced that thing in half and cleaned it up and, and affixed it to the primary, rear primary. Usually when I build a bike, I don't really have a, a plan per se, a sketch or a design. I just sort of kind of let the bike 
talk to me. In this case, I did have a rough design of the bike. I kind of sketched things out a little bit and I kind of played with the geometry. But I really, and I initially had an idea for the exhaust to do more of a traditional racing kind of exhaust on the other side of the bike, on the right side with an upsweep, which is typical of a cafe style kind of bike. But by the time I got all the chassis and everything together, it really didn't work for the bike. It stuck way outside the frame and it just didn't work. And uh, so this really was more of an organic kind of thing. I had this, I had this uh, big piece here, this tapered piece that I had been laying around in my shop for a long time and I just sort of started playing around with it and positioning it. And when I put it on the bike, it just flowed really, really nice with uh, the geometry of the bike and it kind of, uh, you know, uh, adds a whole nother element to it. And so it's a two into one and it's not overwhelming and it's a nice, it's functional, it works really well, the bike sounds amazing and it's not overwhelming. So, and which works for me really well. I just wanted to point out a lot of people when they look at motors and they're shiny and things like that, there's, there are some new motors that come from the factory that way, but most of them don't. Uh, especially the old Harley Davidsons. Usually the, the heads and the cases are usually a matte sort of aluminum finish. So these are all polished to, to be shiny. And the way that's done is literally the bike has to be completely disassembled. The motor has to be completely disassembled all the way down to the flywheels. And each one of those pieces is hand polished. Um, and the same thing with the transmission. And if you look, th it's a very meticulous task because if you look at the, the heads in particular, between the fins is polished as well. That obviously takes a lot of hours and it's another little detail that um, makes a difference in the whole sort of package and creating a sense of contrast between the pieces on the bike, which I really like. I'm all about contrast, you know. I don't like everything completely shiny and I don't like everything completely black. You got to be able to have some separation, I feel, with the components of the bike. And you want, for me, it's all about being organic. I feel like I want to look at a bike and go, that's a cool bike. I don't want to get entirely focused on one piece of the bike or the paint job or whatever. I want everything to be organic. One part relates to the other to make a bigger statement. And I make a, you know, my efforts are more along those lines as far as uh, building and designing. I, I don't want people to be blown away by the paint per se. I want them to be um, moved and motivated by the bike itself. And then uh, obviously there's a lot of fine detail and you, I want to be able to look at a bike and go, wow, that's a cool bike. And then pull me in and then we look at all the little pieces and then, you know, uh, revel in all the details and the work put into it. So that's what I try to do with my bikes. And, and more importantly, I like to ride them. <laughs>